Let's make an animated gecko lib block in Minecraft. Alright, we found ourselves back in the once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom block that is animated with gecko lib to Minecraft right here in Forge 119.4. And for this, we of course once again need a block bench. So this is going to be our animated block. As you can see, it has a you know pedestal and a gold block. And if we look at the animation tab or the animate tab, you can see the gold block just goes up and down. For the first part here, we're just going to export all of the JSON files and the PNG file, and then we're going to add that to IntelliJ, and then we're going to go through all the craziness, because this time, uh, we actually need a lot of things. Once again, of course, to use this, you need the GeckoLib Animation Utils plugin right here. Very important that you have this installed, and then the Blockbench file and all the other files and the code will always be available in the description below, so no worries at all. So we're going to start by going to File Export, and then we want to export the GeckoLib model right here. That's going to give us the GeoJSON file over here. That's exactly right. Then we want to go to Export again and export the display settings. This is going to be the animated underscore block.json file. This is going to be the block model JSON file that we also will need. Then we can go to the Animate tab and go to Animation, Export Animations. And we're just going to make sure that all of them are selected. In this case, the idle animation. Hit Confirm. And this one we need to rename to be the animated underscore block.animation.json. Jason, there you go. And then last but not least, we want to right click on the PNG file, save as, and this is the animated underscore block dot PNG. That is exactly right. And there you go. Those are the four files that we need. And now we can go back to IntelliJ and continue right here. So in the resources folder, we just want to add the different files. So we already have the animations in the geo folder here. So we want to add the geo JSON file right here. This is the animated block geo and then the animated block animation JSON file, the block texture we want to add to the textures block folder, and then the model file we want to add to the block model folder. So we're going to create that in this case, because well, this is once again, one of the, you know, non standard block models. In this case, you can't really well, recreate this with data gen, right? That doesn't really work. And just because while we're in the assets folder, we're just going to create all of the rest as well. So I'm just going to copy over the item model for this. Uh, the item model file is, well, I mean, it literally just points back to the block model file. Nothing crazy going on right here. And then there's also a block states file that we need. But you will see that once I created this over here, this is a standard block states JSON file. Now this one, in theory, you could create via data gen for the purposes of simplicity, I'm just going to copy it over. Like I said, this should be like, it, it, I think we even have some that look exactly like this because this is just a normal one, right? So you can see this is the exact same as this. It's just a little bit differently formatted. So you could, in theory, also just add that. But for the time being, I think we're going to be fine with this. And just because I will forget it, let's just add the lang as well. And then we have all of the JSON files and all of the, you know, asset stuff done. And we can proceed to go into the code. The first thing I just noticed is that in the tutorial mode constructor, we should actually do the following. We should say geckolib.initialize. And we should call this because otherwise, you know, there might be some issues with geckolib. I'm unsure if this is like strictly necessary, but it's better to have this than not. When we have this, we first of all need a block. Now for the block to be animated, we actually also need a block entity. Now I won't go through, you know, insane detail on block entities in this tutorial. However, I have previous tutorials that should be completely fine to use in 1.19.3 and 1.19.4 as well. So I will link that in the top right corner. I will link that in the top right corner, but for the time being, we're just going to go through what we need. So the first thing we are going to need in in the block package, we want a new package and we're going to call that the entity package. So this is for the block entities. And before we put anything in there, we're going to make a new custom block. And that is going to be the animated block. There you go. Now the animated block will extend the base entity block right here. We're going to hover over this, implement the new block entity method over here, hover over this again, create constructor matching super, making sure that the constructor here is public. And once again, if the things here annoy you, click on this, press shift F6, and then we can rename this. Or you can also use parchment mappings that is also possible. We're going to make a deliberate error right here in the new block entity method because we don't have anything here. And extremely important, this is extremely important, please pay attention. We want to add the get render shape method as an overwrite. And we're just going to change the state here as well. And we want to return, this is also important, render shape.entity block animated. 
This is extremely important. If we don't have this, right, if we do not override this, then our block is going to be invisible. So if your block is invisible, then the reason is because you haven't overridden the render shape method right here. So that's very important. And that is pretty much the animated block done until we can add the block entity right here. But what we can already do is we can register our block. So in the mod blocks class, let's just copy over the ebony sapling. This is going to be our animated underscore block. And this is very important. We don't want to use the register block method. We actually want to use blocks.register. So we want to take the deferred register here directly. We want to register the animated underscore block. And then, of course, a new animated block. We then don't need that. And we also want, don't want to copy the sapling. We maybe want to say of material dot stone let's say and then also very important we want to add the no occlusion call over here and that should be that nice with that done we can proceed to add the entity so in the entity package we're going to right click new package called client we're going to need that in just a moment and then first in the entity package we want to add a new class and that is the animated block entity class so this is going to be the actual block entity and the idea of block entities is basically that they are specifically for adding additional data to blocks so you know furnaces and things like that then now this will extend the block entity class and implement the geo block entity we're going to hover over this implement the methods over here those are the geo these are the gecko lib methods and then also constructor matching super of course we're going to delete the first parameter and then once again change the two other parameters shift f6 to rename them and a deliberate error will be present right here for the time being now, all of the rest when it comes to GeckoLib is pretty much almost the same as we've seen, I mean, now a couple of times. So this is once again the animatable instance cache called cache. And this is going to be equal to a new single animatable instance cache. Passing in this, we're going to return it right here. We want to override the get tick method. And this should return the render utils dot get current tick. There you go. And then in the register controllers, we once again have exactly the same thing that we have in the item or in the entity. So this is just going to be register controllers dot add a new animation controller, passing in this, then a new name here, controller, zero transition ticks, and then this colon colon predicate. Now this one doesn't exist, of course, so we're going to hover over this, create the new method, and then instead of here, t animation state get controller, set animation raw animation dot begin dot then idle this is the name of our animation animation type dot loop and there you go and then here afterwards we just want to return the play state dot continue and that's pretty much it this is the exact same thing that we've done two times now and you know this is pretty much always the same idea for playing the animations now once we've done this we can make a new class in the entity package and that is going to be the mod block entities and right here, this is going to be very interesting. This is going to, first of all, have a public static final deferred register of type block entity type of type question mark called block entities. This is going to be equal to a deferred register dot create for registries dot block entity types tutorial tutorial mod dot mod ID. There you go. And of course, when there, where there is a deferred register, there also is a public void register method event bus with an called event bus here. And we're going to call block entities that register passing in the event bus. And this register method we want to immediately call right here under the block entities mod block entities dot register passing in the event bus right here. And there you go. And then we want to register our actual block entity. To do that, we're going to say make a public static final registry object of type block entity type of type animated block entity. This is going to be the animated underscore block underscore entity. And this is going to be equal to block entities dot register. This is going to be the animated underscore block underscore entity name right here. Then a supplier of block entity type dot builder dot of passing an animated block entity colon colon new right after the new comma and then mod blocks dot animated block dot get and then after the second closing parentheses a build passing in null over here and then ending it with a semicolon there you go if this is a little bit complicated over here don't worry of course all of the code as always is available to you in the description below in the github repository so you can double check if there's any errors or you know maybe you've missed uh, closing parentheses and something is wrong you can always double check that with the github repository now that we have the animated block entity registered we can now go back to the block over here and we can basically add it right here so this is going to be the new animated block entity passing in the position and the state nope not the properties the block pause there you go i don't know where it got the properties from but there you go so that should be fine the animated block is then done and then the same thing goes in the animated block entity over here 
This is just going to be the mod block entities dot animated block dot get. And with that, this class is also done. So we can close that. And this is also done. That's amazing. This is also done. Absolutely amazing. And now we can proceed to the client stuff. So this is going to be the model and the render again. So this is the animated block model in this case. And then also the animated block renderer. There you go. And we're going to, of course, going to start with the model in this case. So this is going to be the, this is going to extend geo model of type animated block entity. And we're going to hover over this, implement the methods. And now in this case, I will actually copy over the returns because those are just normal resource locations pointing back to the JSON files that we've copied over in the beginning of the tutorial. So this should really be absolutely understandable and there should be no you know issues for you to basically do that right it just points back to the png file the json file the animation json file and the geo json file nothing crazy going on here and then inside of the renderer we want to extend this with the geo block renderer over here and this is the animated block entity hovering over this create constructor matching super and then instead of the geo model we actually want the block entity renderer provider right here dot context calling this context. And then the model here is just going to be a new animated block model. And there you go. That is what we need in this case. And the renderer needs to be used in our event at the very bottom here, the client mod event. So we want to call the block entity renderers dot register passing in mod block entities dot animated block entity dot get. And then the second one is going to be the animated block entity renderer animated block renderer colon colon new. There you go. And with that, the actual block itself, if we were to spawn the block, would actually already work. That's really nice. However, the item is not yet done because we actually need to make a custom item. This is why we register the block like this so that no item is added because we actually want to add a custom item to it. And this is what we do next. So in the item package, in the custom package, we're going to make a new Java class called the animated block item. Make sure we write this correctly. There you go. And this will extend the block item class and it will implement the geo item. There you go. So we're going to hover over this, implement the methods. This is going to be the gecko lib methods again, and then create constructor matching super. Once again here, we can just rename this by clicking on this shift F6, and there you go. Now this is going to be almost the same with for gecko lib as we've seen previously, an animatable instance cache over here called cache, which is going to be equal to a new single animatable instance cache with passing in this. Inside of the constructor, very important, we also want to say singleton geo animatable, register synced animatable, and then passing in this. Now you might ask, where does all of this come from? Well, this is actually a really good tip as well. If you you can actually go into all of the gecko lib classes as well, right? Middle mouse button click, and you can see I'm now in the geo item class. And if I press control H over here, you can see these are all of the classes that already exist. So for example, how does the jack in the box work? Well, you can see, right, these are the basic things that are overridden over here and how they work and, and what happens here. And you can basically take a look at the examples, right? And you can see, for example, the register sync animator is here in here as well. And you can see there's even some comments over here on what certain things do. So I cannot recommend it enough to basically go into the gecko lib classes as well to understand some of how things work. But we're just going to continue and actually return the cache right here. There you go. We also want to override the get tick method. And this is going to once again return render utils dot get current tick there you go and then for the controllers i'm just going to copy this over because this is going to be exactly the same thing that we have inside of the block entity right so we can literally copy over this right we're going to select it control c and then control v to paste it in and you can see there's no errors because this is exactly the same thing. Now, there's one more method that we want to override, and that is the initialize client method right here with this consumer. Now, we want to make a deliberate error. So we're just going to you know put in an X so that we don't forget to add this because for the block item, well, we also need a block item model and a block item renderer. So in the client, what we can do is new animated block item model and a new animated block item renderer. There you go. Now the model is going to be, well, pretty much just a geo model of type animated block item. Very important. Hover over this, implement the methods. Now, once again, for ease, I'm just going to copy over the methods here because once again, this is just resource location, so nothing crazy. And also you should have all of this available in the description below as well. So that is also fine. The render itself is going to be a geo item render of type animated block item. And we're going to hover over this again, create constructor matching super. We don't need a model. We actually don't need anything in here. And we're going to make a new animated block item model. Very important that we choose the correct one, by the way, right? Not the block model. This is this is why you need to be cognizant of which one you're using, but that is fine. And then in the item right here, we can now 
proceed to fix this as well. In the initialize client method, we can say consumer.accept. And then we're going to make a new iClient item extension. This is going to be an anonymous class. And we're going to overwrite not the get font method, but we want to overwrite the get custom renderer method right here. Instead of the anonymous class, we're going to make a private animated block item renderer or renderer. And then inside of the method here, we're going to say if the this start renderer, if this start renderer is equal to null, then what we're going to do is we're going to say this start renderer equals a new animated block item renderer. And if it's already done, then we can just go in here and we can just return the start renderer. There you go. And that's going to use our custom renderer for this particular item. Now, last but not least, we also want to register the item. So that's going to be right here. This is going to be the animated underscore block item. And this is extremely important. This has to be the same name as our block, right? So this is animated underscore block and inside of the mod blocks class animated block. Those two have to match, otherwise this will not work. This is very important. And this is of course an animated block item. And then the first parameter is gonna be the block that it associates with. So this is gonna be the mod blocks dot animated block dot get. There you go. And I can't believe it myself, but these should be all of the steps that we need to do in order to add this. You can clearly see that the animated block is a little bit more complicated than I think even the entity in my mind, at least, because there's so many, you know, different steps that you have to go through. But uh, yeah, that should be it. Now, let's not forget to add this to the creative mode tab because I always forget that. So let's do the animated block item there you go and now it's also added there we've already done all of the json files and i mean that should be it so let's go into the game and see if it works all right found us back in minecraft and let's just take a look and there we are the animated block and you can see it already animates inside of the inventory and we can set it down and it animates here as well absolutely amazing so i mean that's pretty much all that we need in this case uh, really cool, really awesome. And that's pretty much how like crazy and convoluted it can be to add an animated gecko lip block over here to Minecraft. Right, but that's pretty much everything that we need to do. Like always, of course, all of the code is available in the GitHub repository in the description below. And thank you so much for watching. Hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.